My name's Pete Moore, I'm the author of the Pain Toolkit. I've lived with persistent pain now for about 20 odd years. The reason why I wrote the toolkit is because I wanted to help other people out in the community that uh, also live with persistent pain themselves. They were a little bit stuck as I was, offering them a simple toolkit of skills that they could use to actually self-manage their pain. Now the reason why it's called a, a pain toolkit, as the mechanic needs a, a set of tools to actually maintain or repair cars, people with pain, we need a simple toolkit to enable us to actually self-care and self-manage our pain on a daily basis. It's just a simple set of tools to help you on your way. It's not to be an end all, it's just to get you started. But if you follow those simple tools on a daily basis to the best of your ability, you, like me, and many others around the world who are reading the pain talk, it can make that all important move from patient to person and help you to lead a happier and healthier life, get you back on track. Good luck. Persistent pain is pain that continues for three months or more. It may not respond to standard medical treatment. Your healthcare professionals may have done all they can to help you, but that doesn't stop pain being frustrating. It can affect relationships with friends, family and work colleagues. You used to get out and about, go to work, play sport. Your confidence level drops and all of a sudden you find yourself a can't do person. All because of persistent pain. Sound familiar? Time to get yourself a pain toolkit. Practice using these tools and you could get back to being a can do person. Like a mechanic who repairs and maintains cars, you need a selection of tools and the know-how to use them. It's not as hard as you might think. Tool 1. Accept you have persistent pain and then begin to move on. Acceptance is the first and most important tool. Acceptance isn't about giving up, it's about recognising you're in pain and the need to take control. Think of opening a door. All you need is the key and the motivation to use it. Acceptance is that key. Tool two, building a support team. To be successful in your pain management, you're going to need some support. Become part of a team with your friends, family, your healthcare professionals and work colleagues. Why not find out if there are any support groups in your area and really expand your team? Tool 3. Pacing. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time, obviously. It's all about pacing yourself. Did you used to do too much, then give up? Whether it's work, exercise, your everyday activities, pacing is taking it one bite at a time. Tool four, learn to prioritize and plan out your days. By planning out your days and making a list of the things you'd like to do, you are prioritizing. But remember, be flexible. Monday morning, vacuum the living room then have a few breaks to pace yourself. Monday afternoon, prepare your evening meal, but why not sit down to do it? Tool five, setting goals and action plans. Set yourself simple, realistic goals. This is your action plan. It's like playing football. Where would you be without goalposts and something to aim for? Make yourself a simple action plan broken down into weeks, days or even hours. If you need help, remember you can always turn to one of your team. Self-management programmes like the Expert Patients Programme or NHS Pain Management Programmes are always a good place to learn about setting goals and action plans. Ask your healthcare professional, especially if you're not sure. Tool six, be patient with yourself. Take it steady. It might take a few weeks or even months before you start seeing changes. 
Be patient with yourself. Don't be tempted to overdo it. Otherwise, you could experience a setback. Remember, it's one bite at a time. And don't forget to ask others for help and support. Tool 7. Learn relaxation skills. Relaxation skills are very important for tense muscles and unwinding the mind. How about reading a book, listen to some music, gardening, meeting friends for a coffee, going to the cinema or a restaurant, meditation, dancing, even walking, and belly breathing? Which is something your healthcare professional can show you how to do. Tool 8. Exercise. When you're in pain, the idea of exercise can be scary. It doesn't have to be. Regular stretching and exercising can decrease pain and discomfort, strengthen weak muscles and prepare your body for other activities. You'll feel better for it. Start slowly and build up your stretching and exercising. If you're in pain, remember, unfit and underused muscles feel more pain than toned ones. Swimming or just walking up and down in the pool is a low impact exercise and good if you have joint problems. Talk to your physiotherapist or fitness coach about getting a tailored stretching and exercise program to work on steadily and safely. You'll not only be building up your muscle and joint strength, but your confidence too. Tool 9. Keep a diary and track your progress. Keeping a diary of your progress will help you see how far you've come, your successes and what you've achieved. It's also handy to jot down what didn't work so you can learn from those experiences. Doing this, you're positively self-managing your pain and this will help build your confidence. Tool 10. Have a setback plan. Is it realistic to think you'll never have a setback? The simple answer is no. Having a setback plan, knowing how you'll handle disappointment, is all part of good pain self-management. Make a note of what triggered your setback and what helped. This could be useful if and when you experience another. If you're not sure, ask your healthcare provider for help in creating a setback plan. Tool 11. Teamwork. Remember, you and your healthcare provider are a team. You're working together. Your healthcare professional may not be able to solve everything on their own. You have an important part to play as well. As a team, you can create an action and setback plan that can help you both track your progress. Tool 12 is keeping it up and putting into daily practice all these tools. Do I have to put these tools into daily practice? What? Every day? The simple answer is yes. Just as a person with diabetes has to take their medication and maintain a daily diet, your treatment is planning, prioritising and pacing. Setting yourself weekly or long-term goals and working your action plan. Remembering to exercise, keeping active, then relaxing. This is being in charge of your pain. Keeping it up is difficult, but not as hard as you might think. Once you've set up a routine, it's just like brushing your teeth. Self-managing your pain will become a habit. So get yourself and others involved. And make pain self-management positive with your pain toolkit.